live from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning Long on this hashtag Motivation Monday. I am so excited to welcome back to the show Wes Gear, founder of Rock to Recovery, getting ready for Rock to Recovery for Four. Wow. this Saturday. Yeah. We had so much fun last yeah. year. You guys we're dancing, we we're taking video, yeah. seeing you crush it. I Crushed saw you out in the crowd. It made me feel good. You're just getting your groove on. Oh, we were seriously rocking out. You know, I was really amazed, Wes, how many incredible musicians were there yeah. in playing. I mean, who can we expect this year? Well, this year's crowd is really cool. So we've been, we always honor a sober icon rock star in recovery, but we get a lot of dudes. So year four, we wanted a woman. We got Katie Seagal, who from Married with Children and Sons of Anarchy. Yes. A lot of people don't know she came to L.A. to have a singing career, really? but accidentally just got in two of the hugest uh, TV shows ever. Wow. wow. So she's going to sing and play. We have Brandon Novak hosting, who's from the Jackass movies, who's an amazing, like, transformative story of himself. Like, you know, the Jackass guy. And he's hilarious. Yes, yes. Hilarious, super sober and super rad. And we're honoring John Feldman, who sings for Goldfinger. But what a lot of people maybe don't know about him is he produced Blink-182, The Used, Panic at the Disco, uh, Black Veil Brides, all these killer bands. And, of course, Shavo from System of a Down is joining our band, uh, Sacred Sons, which is guys, you know, from Corn and She Wants Revenge and Seven Dust and Snot. And so, yeah, it's a there's a lot of people. There. Awesome. What, I know this is a hard question, but what's your favorite part of the Rock to Recovery events? Um, being on stage with my brothers. What people don't understand is we have this music therapy program, and this is what the event funds. So you have 13 musicians that are all sober. All of us almost died from addiction. And we're together as brothers, not only delivering music therapy 500 times a month throughout the country and internationally now to Germany and working with Wounded Warriors. And then we get together on stage for a sold out show. And it's so much love. And let me tell you, when you tour with the same band for decades, it's not so much love anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that tells you it is is lying because you just, you know, it's tough to be on the road in a little tour bus metal tube yeah. for a year, you know, decades. You know, people get on your nerves. Anyhow, we got this fresh love. It's like we're in the we're in that pink cloud still. If it's any consolation, uh, Wes, there's a psychological principle. There's two of them, actually. One, I love one is right. Yeah, have. one is a familiarity breeds liking. But then over time, familiarity really breeds contempt. Yeah, so you can start to have that like rub and. Sort of Are we going to have people. We're not going to have it because we don't because, see each other enough. <laughs> but I'm on show four, and I think I'm going to be back for show five. So I love this. We'll yeah. see. We no, better no, not no, breathe. No, no, I don't think it happens. Oh, we know about it, so we can navigate around it, brother. We're good. Please. <laughs> so you mentioned that Rock to Recovery is now international as well. International. Um, well, so what we wanted to do, we are seeing such huge transformations with our music therapy program. I wanted to bring it to the general population. So I started something called the Soul Song Workshop. So we went down to Costa Rica and paired it with things like, uh, you know, meditation, yoga, and the things people know, but then we put in rock recovery, but it's Soul Song Workshop. Stellar results down in the, you know, jungle with monkeys and doing rock recovery. And the first time that the United States Air Force flew us to Germany to work with uh, wounded veterans on Rammstein Air Force Base, wow. which is a big statement that the military flies a bunch of ex-junkies and drunks internationally because this music therapy is really, really working. Mm, just incredible. Yeah. How's it changed your life personally? Uh, I, I can't. It's like, you know, but you don't know. It's so hard to put in words. Um, it's fulfillment. When you're in a band, you're like, buy my record, buy a t-shirt, mm. check out my MySpace page. You know what I mean? And uh, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you can be on my top 10 friends just from the show. You remember that? That was incredible. But when you have a life of fulfillment, yeah. you know, and I was talking to uh, to somebody this morning, usually you're like, my boss is so annoying. The girl I work with is annoying. We love each other so much. And we go to work and we see people transform. They come in, what? I can't play guitar. Why am I here? This is stupid. And by the end, you watch their hearts transform and their whole spirit. It's a spiritual experience is what happens. Even if you're atheist or agnostic, energetically what happens at the end of one of our sessions is a spiritual experience. And then the guys come out on our text feed and they tell the story. Oh my God, I just hear this song and it's 17 like girls with eating disorders singing their brains out. Mm. It's incredible. I read a quote somewhere and it was like, you know, next to silence, music comes best to expressing the inexpressible. Mm. You know, what is it about music? 
Midwest, do you think? Oh, I love this. Everything, this is an illusion. This physical realm is an illusion. What everything is, and this is scientific fact, is frequency. So, and we can argue that it's divine, intelligent frequency. So music is the language of this frequency. A child doesn't need to be taught what an angry song is, a happy song is, a loving song. You put on music, a three-year-old will just start moving to it. So I believe that it's truly the language of God or the universe. And by turning on that music, I, you can resonate that emotion in anybody. The same way I could come in and just go to yeah. you and you'd be like, dude, I feel that. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Music does the it's, same thing. It's amazing. I think music is the, it's the only thing I've ever discovered that can shift my mood. Like instantly. Exactly. You know? And think how much we're underutilizing it. Think about it. There's only like 1,500 music therapists in the whole of the United States. If you ask anybody, how magic is music? Oh, it's so magic. Right. How often are people prescribed music in any sense or form? Right. And how often are we sending drugs out? Hey, your eye blinks too much. Take a drug. Too much water in your mouth. Take a drug. Blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, take a drug. Yeah. My hair isn't growing yeah. fast. Yeah. Take a drug. Yeah. Then you get all these side effects. So you got to take another drug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's our, that's our mission is really to push the envelope. And I think we're doing a great job of it, honestly, of how often music is used to help people. Absolutely. I just love that. Yep. What would you say, Wes, in sort of, uh, sort of setting up these events? What's been the greatest hurdle and how have you overcome it in creating these events? Because they're a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal. and feels like it's a lot of logistics, and a lot of moving parts, and it comes out and it looks so beautiful and you all look so effortlessly, do, you know, effortless doing it. But I know there's a lot of work behind it. Mm -hmm. For, there's a saying, jump and the net will appear. Um, what people might want to think about is some nonprofits come in where a famous actor dies and then all this big money comes in and they just have a staff. We did this like a garage band, just hustling. So I literally took my own money and rented out the Fonda Theater without any talent or anything and was like, I got 20K on the line. I hope this doesn't <laughs> And Keep I that this works. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, this is about authenticity. There's times where I'm in my bed at 3 a.m. and I want to cry. And there's this little child inside of me that goes, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't. Like, I'm afraid. I'm scared. You know, I could almost tap into that emotion right now. But we just press forward and we do it and you call on people. And I had people like Billy Morrison and, uh, um, you know, the guys in uh, Camp Freddy come out and Chester Bennington and Fred Durst and people started rallying. So it's about not listening to the voice of fear and taking the chance. And uh, I always tell my guys, I'd rather do it. We talk about this stuff all the time. Rather do it and fail and know we tried our best mm -hmm. than to, to succumb to fear and not do it. And luckily, here we sit. Yeah. And then you find that, that uh, when you put it out there, the universe helps you. Mm -hmm. That is the miracle of it all. When, if you wouldn't mind, would you give us an example of when the universe really showed up for you? When you really realized this was Ooh. kind of a vortex of radness and you were like, yes. I jumped and I don't know if there's a net. So in recovery, you start repairing all the damage you did. And I did a lot of stuff that hurt my father. And so to make amends, I had to fly out to Reno. I didn't have to. He said, just come visit me, son. I'm out of work. I don't have the corn gig. I'm trying to get the corn gig. And I'm out of money, but I said, Dad, I'll come see you. So I spent the last of my money on a plane ticket to fly to Reno, rent a car, drive three hours to Alturas, California to just hang with my 80-something-year-old dad who was failing at the time. And I'm like, but I'm trying to get the corn gig. Yeah. I need to go. Get, I can't leave. I got to do this. This is corn. But the law is you take care of recovery, family, spirituality first. So I went, fine. Uh, this seems uh, counterintuitive. Let me go fly and see dad. It's the right thing to do. And then when I got off the plane in Reno, who was playing in Reno that night? Corn. corn. What? Oh, what? You're kidding. I got chills. Yeah. No, I didn't know. So I got off and I'm like, corn. And the best part of it was I got chills. Yeah. Well, oftentimes our plan isn't as good as God's plan, the universe's plan. So if I had seen corn in LASD, it would have been hard to talk and connect with the guys because it's a big market. So I saw them in Reno. They're bored. There's not as many people in Reno. Dude's like, have my suite. Let's hang out. Let's chat. We really got to connect. Wow. I got to see my dad. I'm still having chills right wow. now. So, so it's kind of like what I've learned is when we put God, spirituality, or whatever, higher self first, we let go, and then we let God's plan come into it. Oh, whatever you want to call That's it. gold. Absolutely. I mean, it's always bigger, better, and unexpected. Unexpected. And what I've learned is, is we don't, we're never going to be able to explain the unexplainable. Mm -hmm. But my analogy is it's like a puzzle. So you get a piece of the puzzle, puzzle like that picture, that, sorry, I'm sorry, you put it in there, 
And you keep getting these chunks of the puzzle. And after a while, you have your own version of what the universe, spirituality, vortex of radness is. And for me, that was the vortex of radness. Going to make right with my father, seeing his joy, having the universe respond to me, the corn thing. And then you watch this energy that's just shared with everybody. And that's the vortex of radness to me. Anyway. Yeah, that is so inspiring. And now you're doing it and changing the world. Well... That sounds great. Yeah. Okay, you let's are. go. Absolutely. I well, believe it. And we'll be rocking out in support of you this yeah. Saturday. Please tell everyone where they can get tickets. Are they still available? Okay. So here's the thing I said on my Instagram. We're totally sold out, but we are going to release 50 more tickets. We stole them back from some guests. So if you go to axs.com, you can get tickets right now. They're going to sell out fast. axs.com. We release some more tickets. It's this Saturday. Uh, August 24th at the Fonda Theater in L.A., Katie Segal, Brandon Novak, uh, John Feldman, Shava from System of Down, Sacred Sons. These the beautiful year. women's. Yeah, and I'll be <laughs> twanging a little guitar uh -huh. for you. Killing it as always. Yeah, I appreciate you. you. Uh, love you so much. Bye. This Saturday, Lala Land. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more Good Morning, Lala Land.